Welcome back to Issues of Faith. We have with us uh, Deacon Ron Deal. He has been removed from the ministry uh, in the Catholic Church because of a public disagreement um, with the Nashville Diocese. As we went to break, um, I ask, you, you say you want an independent investigation. Mm -hmm. Who does that? Is it the Attorney General? Is it the District Attorney? And do you think they want to take that on? A couple of responses to that. One, I think these voluntary disclosures that the diocese is making creates a false sense of security for law enforcement. Look how transparent we're being. Here's the information. Oh, never mind the fact that the number keeps changing. We're still releasing information. Secondly, most states, it appears to have fallen to the attorney general, either his own office or their state investigative police agency, TBI, for example, to do the investigation. My understanding is, is that the Tennessee Attorney General is, is extremely limited by statute to what he can do. And I asked the office when these stories mm -hmm. came out, are you going to investigate, as they did in other states, and that, that's what they said. Mm -hmm. That's not really our authority. And that's why we're pursuing legislative approach to it, is maybe the legislature needs to tell the Attorney General for the public good, you need to investigate this, or you need to figure out a way, impanel a grand jury, get the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation to look at it. I would note too that the FBI, the Justice Department, is looking at this as well. In, in October, after the August Pennsylvania report, the U.S. Department of Justice sent a letter to every diocese in the country telling them, don't destroy any files relating to sexual abuse of minors by priests, and in particular, we want to see the files relating to the transfer of priests from state to state. That creates federal issues. So when you say you were pursuing this legislatively, mm -hmm. what exactly are you pursuing? I saw that there was something that would remove uh, the statute of limitations on child sex abuse crimes, because that's one thing the DA said, mm -hmm. it present us with a crime and then we'll right. investigate. Well, if the crime is already limited out as far as the statute, there's no crime. Right, there's, there's two things going on. One, myself along with SNAP, we're working through the State General Assembly to petition the Attorney General, get involved in this. Quit leaving it to the dioceses to investigate themselves. Secondly, the Lieutenant Governor, who is also Catholic, by the way, from East Tennessee, he has got an initiative underway to expand the statutes of limitation regarding child sex abuse. One, one of them in particular, I think is particularly telling, would create a Class E felony for second and subsequent failures to disclose abuse and a Class E felony for an intentional disclosure not to disclose. So that, I think that's the, that, that is a separate track that the Lieutenant Governor is pursuing. How confident are you that something will pass this session that would tell the Attorney General to investigate the diocese? It's hard to say. I mean, the legislature just came back into session today. Uh, I, I know that the representatives we've been talking to, they are interested in the subject. They are as, as horrified by the scope of what has gone on in other states. I, I think it is particularly telling when you get an attorney general in Illinois saying the Catholic Church cannot investigate itself, and yet we're still clinging to that in Tennessee, either because the statutes don't allow for an independent investigation, or the dioceses are just digging their heels in. I, I would say, if you're so sure of your, of your information, why do the numbers keep changing? Why do the assignments that you're listing for these men keep changing. Prove me wrong. Come on, what, what, what do you have to lose by allowing an independent investigation? It might create that level of comfort and security that the faithful deserve, and I would say the clergy deserves too. And what have you, um, you've obviously uh, received criticism, I guess, from the bishop because you've been removed from, from the ministry because of this public disagreement. Mm -hmm. What about other people within the Catholic Church? Is it, what, what sort of feedback are you getting? Are you getting people saying, leave this alone. This is, this is just dragging up stuff that continues to hurt the church, or are you being cheered on? I've had no one tell me, leave this alone because it brings up bad things in the past that should stay in the past. One parishioner posted a public comment on the Tennesseans website saying I should be quiet. I've had no fewer than maybe a dozen parishioners reach out to me directly saying we applaud what you're doing. I will say the one thing that has been most disturbing, and I've come to learn it's, it's not unusual, is I haven't had a whole lot of support from the clergy locally. 
uh, a few deacons with whom I'm very good friends have said, yeah, we, we understand what you're doing. But it's interesting, I've spoken to a couple of deacons around the country and they've had the exact same experience. No one who's in their own place wants to get involved. But I just, after the August report from Pennsylvania, I, 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 I prayed on it. And I thought, this cannot stand anymore. And then when I saw what the diocese was was attempting to do in October with these piecemeal disclosures and you know they couched the early October disclosure as well that was a preliminary list that's not what your email said it says this is the list we're releasing and you omitted a name of someone who was recently accused of the principal of Father Ryan High School how do you not put that information in there okay well we'll add his name oh and look we found some other names well, and now SNAP's got a few names we should add. So SNAP's pursuing this across the state as well. Uh, I, I seem to be the, carrying the banner here in Nashville, and I'm happy to do that because there's been a lot of suffering because and of the church. Would you ever leave the church over this? You, you, yes. what, what, your, your history is what? You born and raised Catholic. Born and raised in the Catholic Church. Yeah. You're passionate about this. Mm -hmm. Would, what does this mean for you going forward? It has affected a toll. Um, personally, um, my family, um, it's, it's been very, very hard, but the Catholic Church can be such a tremendous force of good. You want health care? Catholics. Higher education in this country? Catholics. <laughs> we can be a great force of good. It doesn't mean that we're perfect. And institutionally, I agree with the bishop. I, I think that the seminarian education process has changed remarkably in the last 30 or 40 years. The, the, these young men who are willing to give their lives to the church in service of others, they run a gauntlet of, of psychological tests. It's, they're not foolproof, but it has gotten a lot better. And it was the same way when I ran the deacon program. We, we tried to make sure we were asking the right questions before someone came in. It doesn't mean, though, as the attorney pointed out, well, it was 40 years ago, well, does it matter? Yes, it matters, because so many of these survivors were told by the diocese, your claim is not credible. It turns out some of them were. And so for 2019, can the church put this behind it? We have a minute left. Can the church put this behind it, or does this continue all through, I guess, the foreseeable future? I I really hope they can. They thought they had put it behind them in 2002. The Holy Father has called a, a worldwide conclave of bishops for next month to discuss this. I think a lot of, I think a lot of the bishops around the world think that this is a uniquely American product, um, problem. I would note that the Cardinal Archbishop of Melbourne, Australia, has recently been convicted of abuse. So this goes around. This goes on around the country. I hope we can put it in the past, but the only way we're going to be able to do that is for the church to finally say, we're getting out of the middle of the process of, disclo of disclosing this, and we're going to let an independent body do it. The most uh, difficult of issues, um, but thank you. Thank you for coming on and thank talking you. about it. Deacon Ron Deal. Uh, thanks, all of you, for watching Issues of Faith. Have a great day, everyone.